Hi guys, great to see you. Today I'm going to be doing an ancient Roman women's beauty routine. We're going to start with the skincare, then move on to the makeup, and lastly, do the hair. It's going to be as historically accurate as possible, all while using ingredients we can find in our kitchens. This is my model, Alethea. Let's get started with the skin. Skin care was such an important part of a women's makeup routine, so I'm first going to wash her face in a bowl of cream. Emperor Nero's wife, Papia, was known to wash her face and body in donkey milk every single morning. She had 500 donkeys for this purpose. Heavy cream was thought to have anti-aging and skin plumping properties. After massaging the cream into her skin, I wiped it off with a thorough wet cloth. Next, it's time for the mask. Here I'm applying honey. Roman women loved their face masks and usually mix their own using ingredients bought in apothecary. Honey is healing, antibacterial, and moisturizing, and it's also great for sensitive skin. We will leave this mask on for 10 minutes. I washed it off with warm water, and then we're going to moisturize. The Romans used all sorts of plant and animal oils as moisturizers, either mixed at the apothecary or by themselves. Examples are lanolin, lard, rosehip oil, and olive oil. In fact, in 2003, a jar of 2,000-year-old face cream was excavated from a grave and found to contain animal fat, white starch, and powdered tin. Now that the oil is massaged and absorbed, it's time for foundation. Roman men loved the look of a woman who hadn't spent a day at work in the sun, so ladies made up their faces with white lead and chalk. Lead foundation was made by dissolving lead shavings in vinegar and mixing that with grease or chalk. It was extremely toxic and caused skin cancer and blood cancer. Women in the Roman times did know how dangerous it was, but they used it anyway because the white skin was such an important part of Roman beauty. Here I'm taking some berries and applying it as blusher. Blush was traditionally made with red ochre, wine dregs, red seaweed, mulberries, and minium. But I imagine that poor women made do with other natural pigments such as cranberries. Blush was very important as it gave the women a rosy glow as if they had been outside, but then again, not. It was very hard to blend in the cranberries, as you can see, so I was kind of tugging on her face quite a bit to get it blend in. She's such a good sport. Here you saw me using a kabuki brush to blend in the white chalk after I applied the blush. But in the Roman times, they didn't use horsehair brushes. They actually used sea sponges to blend in the makeup. Now on to the eyes. Roman women loved to darken their eyes with dark eyeliner and shadows, inspired by Cleopatra. They would grind minerals and metals with a mortar and pestle to create powder-based eyeshadows. An example of this is using antimony for a silvery smoky eye. To make it this simple smoky eye, I just lit a candle and turned the spoon over the flame as you saw earlier. In a couple of seconds, the spoon would be black. Then I took a small paintbrush and added some coconut oil and mixed it up to create a pigment. I lined the base of the eye with a thin brush and then blended it upwards. Soot is carcinogenic, so it was also dangerous for a regular use. I don't recommend using this technique, even though it does create a beautiful smoky eye, as you can see here. Now the only problem is, after this, is getting the other one to look the same. As you can see, I had kind of a bit of trouble with that. So just line the eye and then blend upward. Sounds simple. Hey, 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 hey. 
I ended up working on these eyes quite a bit to try and get them to match. And here you are! As you can see, they are quite different. Sorry about that. Alright, now it's time for some mascara using the same technique. Long eyelashes were also very valued as they were a like an indicator of health. If you are known to be unfaithful or unhealthy, your eyelashes were um, thought to be thin or short and so the good beautiful women had nice and thick eyelashes that they accentuated with set. Now it's time for the eyebrows. We are almost done. So for the eyebrows, I took a clove, as in the spice, a whole clove, and I burnt the tip. And watch your fingers, this can be kind of dangerous. I blew on it gently to cool it, and then just marked it on a towel to make sure it was pigmented enough. If it's not pigmented enough, just keep burning it until it is. Make sure it's cool before you start using it, otherwise you could really burn yourself. Roman women love dark eyebrows to go with their dark lids and lashes. They preferred the look of eyebrows that go out past the, the outer corner of your eye and in towards the center of your nose, much like a unibrow. It's kind of a weird style, so I just did the natural shape of Alethea's eyebrows. This is like a great hack. If you ever need some eyebrow powder, you can just take a clove, burn it, and it works really great. Alright, now for the lips. Research shows that Roman women didn't wear lipstick, but I'm sure they moisturized or tinted their lips a bit in some way or another. So here I'm using the cheek pigment again. As you can see, it does not work well at all. It just kind of curdled and slid off the lips. Here you can see that I wiped all like the little curdles away and added some coconut oil so her lips have like a nice slightly rosy glossy look all right now for the hair today i'm doing the touchulous hairstyle which was very common in ancient rome and with the etruscans here i am parting the hair to the ears and i also did a center part so that there are two even sections in the front of her face I um, left a few inches of hair at the nape of her neck that will be worked on later and I'm combing the rest into a tight ponytail. If her hair looks a little greasy to you, that is true. Roman women combed lots of oil and fat into their hair to keep it um, very rich and easy to style. Also really helps with static because they didn't have hairspray back then. Alright, and I'm just twisting this into like a doorknob shaped bun. I want it to be as high as possible. And since Alethea has such long hair, I can just twist the ends around the base and it'll stay perfectly fine. All right, for the nape hair, I'm just twisting it down about four inches and then twisting it up. And then I'm going to do a three stranded, just like a regular old braid, also known as an English braid, all the way to the ends. The tetulus was one of the oldest recorded Roman hairstyles, and like I said, we've seen on ancient Etruscan sculptures found in graves. And here I am, wrapping the brace of the braid are looping it around the bun. This is a very interesting detail, I thought. 
the tetulus was a very common everyday style, but it would have been for mostly upper class women or women that had girls or sisters or aunts or mothers that could do their hair for them because this hairstyle isn't easy to do by yourself. And as you can see, I twisted that first twist all the way around her bun. And if you want to know what's going on more, I took the side section and as you can see, I'm just parted into three sections and I'm twisting them away from her face and around the base of the bun. The first twist was twisted towards the part, the second one away, and the third one also towards the part. As you can see, it's twisting up towards the part. And around it goes, onto the other side. Parted in three, twist up towards the part and around the base. Twist away from the part and around the base. And for that ear hair, twist up and around the base. And this beautiful hairstyle is done. Alright, to secure it in place, I took some linen thread and a needle. And I'm just sewing the hair to the scalp. This was extremely common because Roman women did not have bobby pins or hair elastics like what we have today. So instead they use sticks like I have in Alethea's hair right now and like linen thread and needles to, to keep their hair in place. And there I am tying the thread in a knot. I'm just sticking it underneath the base of the bun. And I just took the stick out and it's perfectly secure. Look at that, I think it turned out pretty good. I was in quite a time crunch while filming this, so it actually took me around four minutes. Here's Alethea's before picture and her after picture as a Roman woman. Thanks guys for watching, bye.